Never took a ZFS640 tranny apart, so bear with me when I try to show you how to do so. As you can see, the gear shift assembly is missing. This is because I have two trannies and only one gear shift assembly. The newer tranny is in use in my C4 at this time. Some time ago, the sixth gear on this tranny seized up on me when I was driving over 160 miles per hour. Removing the gear shift assembly is very easy and I'll explain it in a few words. Shift it into first gear, remove the cable ties, slide snap ring on the gear shift rod past the shaft pin and take a drift and punch out the pin. Shift back to neutral and remove the control arm bolt up front and the two bracket bolts in the back. That's it. First, we'll remove the solenoid. Now comes the shift shaft detent bolt, inner and outer spring, and then the shift detent. Back up lamp switch. Remove the ventilator tube. It's a 14 millimeter wrench. Bearing retainer flange and tube. Carefully take off the gasket. You might need it if you can't find a new one to buy. It's made out of very tough material, so uh, you can use it probably several times without buying a new one, if you can even buy a new one. Loosen the 10 millimeter bolt, which holds the speed sensor and gear in place. Take the tranny and insert the input shaft into the 2.5 inch hole you drilled into your workbench. This hole must be 1.5 inches from the beginning of your workbench. Remove the cover of the reverse idler. There is one bolt that is longer, mark it if you wish. You might notice the 30 millimeter plug is already removed. Thought the camera was on, but it wasn't. Just take a chisel and do the same as you did with the four 10 millimeter plugs. This is the reverse idler gear, which we will be removing in uh, about a minute or so. Removing the reverse idler gear shaft, you need a special tool or do it like I did. Take a long 8mm bolt and a big and heavy socket or equivalent. So you remove the idler gear shaft, now remove the gear. Inside you'll find the bearing.
Now we want to remove the extension housing. Remove all bolts and remember there is one shorter bolt which you can mark if you want to. Remove the extension with a few taps of a rubber mallet. Remove the gasket. Here you also have to be careful not to ruin it because uh, these things are very hard to get and if you do have or are lucky to get one, uh, they cost a fortune. Remove all bolts from the rear case. Don't lose any of these very thin washers. Remove the drive gear clip, speedometer drive gear and washer. Remove the snap ring and washer. Now to remove the rear case you'll need a puller. I bought a long 8mm threaded rod, cut two 10 inch long rods, a few nuts and you're good to go. The thread length inside the case is 19mm or 3 quarter of an inch. So turn the rods into the case until they bottom out. Now you can remove the magnet. Look at all the metal abrasion clinging to the magnet. Now we want to remove the four 10 mm plugs. Do this step before you remove the rear case so the case won't move around. I forgot to do it. Using a medium sized screwdriver and a hammer, just hit the outer rim of the plug until it turns and then just pry it out. Take out the spring and detent. There are different length springs, so don't get them mixed up. Now we want to remove the countershaft seal. You'll notice mine looks a little different than yours. It's because I have removed it once before. I didn't want to spend $50 for a new seal. So what I do is take a long thick bolt and spot weld it to the seal. Take something that is a bigger diameter than the seal. In my case, I took an old bearing and a few washers. If you don't have a welder, there is a big hole in the middle of the seal and you can just pry it out with a big screwdriver. You will though have to buy a new seal which uh, like I said costs $47 plus the freight charges. I'm spot welding the bolt to the seal. Just three spots will do fine. Here you can see I already removed the bolt from the seal. That's what it looks like, actually. And in the middle you'll find a washer that I soldered. 
to seal the 10 millimeter hole. Now we want to remove the countershaft nut. I made the tool myself, took a 27 millimeter socket and welded four lips to it. This tool costs about $70, you can buy it, uh, as also most of the parts and the gaskets uh, from zfdoc.com. He's very, very good and you can practically buy everything you need for your ZF tranny. Now we have to take off the snap ring and the selective shim on the countershaft side. I'm using the thickest one available. It's 0.082 inch or 2.05 millimeters. Now turn the tranny upside down and remove the inner rays of the main shaft bearing. Taking two big screwdrivers and a little patience will do the trick. Now punch out the inner lock pin, then the outer roll pin. Remove the gear shift shaft. One more snap ring and washer. Before we take off the reverse synchronizer sleeve, we want to take off the pressure piece, synchronizer ball and spring. A magnet will come very handy. Do not drop any parts, you might not find them anymore. I took off the reverse synchronizer sleeve, fork and rail all at once. Removing the 1 to 2 shift rail is a little tricky. Just pulling it out of the fork isn't enough. You will have to take a rubber mallet to help a little at the beginning. We're almost finished. I'll just remove the snap ring from the input shaft. Now we're ready for the final step, removing the front case. Take a big screwdriver and engage the third gear. While pulling up the case, hit the case with a mallet. If all goes well, you will just have to hit it once and the case will come off. As you might have noticed, it was already loose before striking the case. And here it is, we're done. Just remove the two shift rails and that's it. Thank you very much for watching. And don't forget to subscribe and leave a comment. We are working at the moment on part two, the disassembly of the main shaft and the counter shaft. So stay tuned.